gang, Gucci gang. Gucci gang. Spread the <laughs> saw earlier once the spark plugs have already been done I capped them they're installed in the car uh, this is gonna be not a review but I guess a slight uh, review uh, I got the mad I think they call called mad uh, charge pipes they came with my deal um, I think it was like 600 bucks for it was, it was a hell of a deal that's why I bought it it was the MH, MHD, boot mode 3, included with the charge parts for about 600 bucks, so I couldn't say no, so, this is, I guess that's all that comes in, I guess you can review this brand, I've never heard of their brand, I think this is um, Extreme Powerhouse's brand, from my understanding. I'm gonna go ahead and guess, and you have to use the OEM ring. Hopefully, it's not pin and that's installed. It looks pretty cool. They have meth ports, so obviously, I'm gonna have to thread lock that. So, the finish is pretty cool. I mean, it's a charge pipe, so I honestly think all charge pipes are pretty much the same. So it's a nice gloss black finish. So they look pretty legit. Clamps seems like they're all the same size. And couplers. So. People say it's a pain in the ass to install these. <laughs> I don't know, I guess I'm about to find out, so yeah. At least you guys get a glimpse of what I'm installing. The Mad Powerhouse, like I said. Charge pipes. Nicely. So yeah. Let me take all this into the car. Or let me see if I gotta go get the OEM rings and compare them for this. I'll be back. Okay, so. These are the OEM charge pipes. As you can see, <laughs> flat, round. You do need to use the inner ring, so I use to tool, whatever you want to call it. To be able to pull it out. There's one here. Yeah. I guess the only bad thing about using um, I know yeah, it doesn't have this mount and uh, this one doesn't have this little thing, I think it's for the power cable. I forgot to do this. But yeah, I'm gonna wanna give these a cleaning. Then after maybe add some little bit of oil so it slides into the turbo and it's more nicely, I guess you can say. So I usually like to dip them in oil a little bit. Or not dip them, but coat them at least. Just 
just you know, put a little coating on it. Just to mix the install. That much of a breeze. There you go, wipe it down. And like I said, you do need to thread lock these things, so I think there are six. No, there are five. So search for your NN5. Give it a little dab of thread locker. You can use some um, that plumbing tape, whatever it's called. Or thread tape. I like to use this. Just trust it more, I guess. Just give it a little nudge. Should be fine. Sometimes you do kind of want to give it some time to dry out. It should dry pretty fast, but take into consideration. They do may want to give it a little bit of time to dry. So a few drops is fine. Like I said, if you ever get a boost leak, you know where it's from. <laughs> it's probably this. Right, well, there you go. The charge parts are set up, so. Let's go try to install them, I guess. See how that goes. Then we'll change it to the, to the garage. Alright, so. Um. I believe the bolts that hold the charge parts are E10. Uh, these. Uh, from the looks of it, you might want to stick them in there before, because if not, you're not going to be able to like, put it on there. So, let's see how much of the pages go. They say the rear one is worst. Let me get to that first and I'll come back. Alright, so one problem that I'm finding already. 
And the rear one, the bolt gets caught in the way where this doesn't fit. I'm probably gonna literally have to go in there with, like a, with a fucking wrench. And it looks like it's a size 8. So you have to manually tighten it with a wrench. <laughs> it's a charge pipe zone. I don't know if this is all aluminum charge pipes. It's just this brand, but yeah, this way, this weld right here, it's a very bad design. You could get to it, but you're probably gonna end up stripping the bolt, so I don't fucking know. Another thing to note, installing these clamps, I already took it off once. You may want to add a little bit of mental purpose grease just so this thing slides in and out faster or better. I'm not struggling with the clamps. Once they're on, because as you can see, it's a pain in the ass to pull out. So. Anyways, I'll come back once I turn down. I'll try to look for a wrench. I'm not sure what you guys once it's on, I guess. Alright, so. <laughs> Holy shit. Let me explain how much of a bitch that was. Like I said, I don't know what I said earlier. This world, like, I don't know if it's this brand. It's mad. Or Extreme Powerhouse's brand. I'm pretty sure they all get made in China. They're a freaking brand for yourself. Blah blah blah, you name it. Uh, I'm not sure if they all have the same design, but I'm pretty sure they maybe do. This little welder here it gets on the way if you've been able to put a socket here. So, an example that weld gets in the way. Can you slightly tilt it? Maybe. But then at that point, you kind of risk stripping the threads on the turbo for the end of it. So, only alternative I found <laughs> was using a freaking emitter or wrench. Tighten it little by little, as much as I could squeeze in between that intake, turbo intake inlet, and then now the charge pipes. So, yeah, I'm pretty pissed off at that. So, anyways, now you guys have an idea what you gotta do. Um, I'm gonna take this camera back over there because there's another update or upgrade I'm doing to this car at the same time I'm doing this. Uh, so it may be a long video. But I gotta do the Mishimoto catch cam. And I need to take this off right now that I have enough space to do it before I start putting the other charge pipe in the intake box. So, yeah, so let me get back to that. Alright, so. Other upgrade for I'm doing what else there. It's a very well needed catch can. So BMW F80. I don't know if this is how it comes. I bought it second hand. Everything is brand new. I opened this so just to make sure everything was there. So obviously you'll get a bag. Um, you know, nice a freshener. I think that was in there, so I was double checking. So I opened it. These are the fittings for the AN lines. Um, these. <clears throat> is there cheaper catch cans out there perhaps um, it's just this is the one that flows fluent with the car yeah, I think that's a real dumb deal like I said I got it like for half the price brand new some guy was partying out well selling his cars because he sold this car it's a mounting bracket <clears throat> the new hardware you need to use for these and honestly I think it's the only model. Your catch can. 
so yeah. That's your catch can right there. Goes tight up here. Have to loosen those bolts, obviously. They're very, very small. Yeah, you know, one over there. Good thing I got these little ones. It's gonna be, uh, I think, a four and a half. Let me set all this stuff up and then show you what needs to be removed over there. It's the vent holes from the intake, so whatever has to, from the valve cover to the intake has to be disconnected and rerouted. I believe there's a little sensor you kind of have to use a pick to unattach the. I really don't have spacer to show you that, so probably won't be able to see it. There's other videos out there, um, but you'll see what I mean when once you get there. I'll try to show it, but you know. Let me let me go over there and remove all that stuff that I'm telling you that you do need to remove. And show you the screw and we're able to remove in order to get out to this all this stuff. So let's we'll come back in. Okay, so I'm sorry I'm not gonna be able to really show you, but here there's this little sensor right here. Should be able to take a pick to to it to remove it. And then you gotta remove this little I don't know what size it is. I'm gonna say it's a T30. Um, let's see. No, it's a T. It's gonna be one size down. Well, it's a T25 for sure. <laughs> I already went through all the other ones. So, yeah, so. Go ahead and loosen that, take off the center, and then pull that off, pull this off, and then you gotta reuse this. And some of the attachments, and I'll show you once this hose is off, I'll show you on the other side what you gotta do. Alright, so. Took off the other holes. This is what you're supposed to do. Obviously, you gotta tighten this part still, but. Mishimoto has a video how to do it. You're supposed to heat this up and pull them off, but as you can see, one of them didn't come off. I had to grind it, cut it, you know, so. If you ever decide to go back to stock, I have to buy new homes. So just be aware of that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Put some of these stuff back on there, not the catch can. Then we put the other charge pipe and then see how it goes. Alright, I'm back. So, as stated. I'm setting everything up here for the Mishimoto catch can, so I've yet to put the can. Put the hoses and everything are done. So I should be able to tackle the last charge pipe. Um like I said, it's pretty generic. I don't want to record it and run out of memory, but <laughs> um obviously it goes here. Like I said, you might have to wiggle that little bolt on there beforehand. So it's easier and probably gonna have to tighten it with eight millimeter again. <laughs> but I should be able to take all of this, tighten up the clamps, make sure everything's snug, set the intercooler back down to its mounts, and go from there. So I'll bring you guys back once I put everything else on. Like I said, use some of that multi purpose helps. Alright, <clears throat> so we're back. Bolt pipes are on. Man, is it a bitch, but yeah, it's coming along nicely. I still need to put the Mishimoto intakes, bleed the system, put all the stuff back. Yeah, we should be done. So, I'll come back once I put the intake, gotta put the intake two back on to the inlet, and then do the rest, I guess. Alright. Alright. Box number three in the same install. <laughs> uh, I went ahead and bought myself some used intakes. So, hopefully, 
on the start of smooth. Racing intakes. It does the same thing as Brave Motorsports, I think. Let's see where this lands. I heard there was some sort of issues of installing these clamps to the intake boot, so hopefully that's not the case. But I do gotta go get um, my math sensors off of the other ones. So, um, yeah, let me go remove the intake match sensors, annoying intakes, and then I'll set this back up and hopefully put it on and finish putting this and everything else. So, yeah, well, I'll be back. Alright, so obviously, thing when you remove it, you want to install it there. I think this cat didn't get me any Hardware for that, but I found some that I can use. So let's go with this. Map sensors are a T20. See me sweating in the cameras because it's hot as shit. I don't think. I don't know how hot outside. Obviously, the same way you take it out, install it back the same way in here. If it seems like it's giving you trouble, like always, put a little dab of oil around the O-ring, just so that you, when you stick it inside, you don't tear it. Hmm. I wonder if that's normal. Or if it's a defect with the fucking. Well, <clears throat> no matter what, it's having a hard time sticking in there. Hopefully the screw can push it in. Because if not, we're gonna have an issue, so I'll be back when we get it. I didn't bolt for that on this one. Alright, so once again, this is your your you know choice, I guess. But I'm gonna go ahead and put some thread marker just because there's a lot of vibration here.
See, and that's one thing that worries me because it's not sitting flush for whatever reason. So I may take this off and I wonder if this is why this cat sold it. But since we don't want to find out, I may sand it down a bit. Just a sensor fits better. I guess. So you know what? If I come back and do this with a, out of camera and I'll come back. Alright, so now that <clears throat> everything else is on, charge five intakes. It is kind of a pain in the ass to put. I did have to shave down the math housing with sandpaper a little bit so the sensor could sit flush. Like I said, I was going to do it off camera. It's flush now. Good to go. I'm going to install the little catch can. Can it please? I need to adjust a couple things here and I'll be back once I put these on. Alright, so when it comes to the catch can, <laughs> put the clamps in and then put the hoses because there's no way you can pull these clamps through this. The hoses are so thick that you can't pull the clamps back. So the best thing to do is put the clamps hanging around here, hold them while you put in the hose and then try to slide as much as you can back up. And even then, they're gonna be a little bit different patterns because <laughs> I don't know why they gave those, but they're thick as hell and they don't clear, so. So I'm gonna tighten all that up right now for now and then come back and see what's up. All right, well, as you can see, it's pretty much done. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's a pain in the ass. <sighs> I guess this is where I end my video. I am not gonna show up. Yeah, put everything else back on. Um, obviously, I just have to finish the coolant. I have to bleed it. The bleeding procedure is online. You can actually find it. Um, pretty much. From here. Later on, I'm gonna try to clean it all up and give it a steam cleaning, but for now, I just want to see if I can fix this crap and if it's done. But yeah, so all right, man. Well, thanks for watching. I got some other videos coming for tail lights, a little theory mods that I want to do, and my flash. I'm not going to flash it yet, I'm just going to keep like this for now because like I said, I still got the crank hub, uh, crank bolt catch to install the CBC. But I kind of can't do it here, I need to be able to lift the car and where I'm at right now currently with this car, I can't do that so I need to take it to the back of my house so I can jack it up, but yeah. Alright man, well peace out, deuces, subscribe, like, flame, comment, whatever, whatever gets you going bros. <laughs> Lates.